Good morning, and thank you for worshiping with Resurrection United Methodist Church of Hastings, Minnesota. Today we're going to finish up our series on facing the difficult things in life as we look at facing failure. Please open your heart to God's Spirit and enter into a time of worship now. sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Well, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Well, I walked in darkness, clouds covered me. I had no idea where the way out could be. Then came the sunrise and rolled back the night. join with me in our prayer this morning. God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we pause first of all to remember those who have died and gone before us, especially those who have given their lives in service to our nation and to our world. We remember before you, Pastor Chris, and all who are currently serving in our armed forces, and also those who are serving in the battle against COVID-19. Gracious Lord, Life offers us many choices. We pray that we may choose wisely and in keeping with your will. And when we fail, we throw ourselves upon your mercy. As you taught us, so now we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. of creation 
There at the start before the beginning of time In no point of reference You spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light And as you speak Stars are made to worship, so I can see your heart and everything you've made. Every burning star, signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so.
Last week, we looked at making tough decisions. How do we make the right choice when we have hard things to decide? And, and we noted that no matter how hard we try, there are some times when we're simply going to make a bad choice, when we're going to fail miserably. And today, we're going to start off by looking at uh, one of the classic stories of an epic fail in the Old Testament, the story of Jonah. Jonah. If I were to ask you what the story of Jonah is about, you might say something like, well, it's about a whale or a big fish. But really, to, to say that Jonah is about a big fish is like saying that, that a baseball game is about hot dogs. Yes, they're there, but it's not really the point. And the point of Jonah is to look at somebody who is trying to make a hard decision and how they fail miserably at it, and what God does in response to it. It's the story of an epic failure and God's second chance. So we'll just start off right at the beginning. We'll look at the first couple of verses. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. So, right away, Jonah has a decision to make. Is he going to listen to God, and is he going to go to Nineveh, or is he going to do something else? Is he going to go his own way? Verse 3. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port, after paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Jonah chooses to go the other direction. And how many times have, have you and I done this? Where God is calling one direction and we choose to go the other. So, Jonah heads off. And he flees in the direction of Tarshish. He gets on a ship and... At sea, there's a terrible storm. And the sailors are all praying to their various gods, hoping that the storm would end. And it doesn't. So, so finally, they need somebody to blame. And they draw lots, and Jonah's name comes up. And Jonah fesses up. He says, it's all my fault. I've brought this upon us. If you just throw me into the sea, then everything will be all right. And the sailors do throw him into the sea, and the storm begins to calm down. And when we hear a story like that, if we've never heard it before, we might think that that's the end. Jonah has disobeyed God, he's made a bad choice, and now he has to suffer the consequences. At least there's a silver lining, because the, Jonah, the book of Jonah says that that after the storm calms down, then, then the other sailors begin to believe in God and make their vows to God. So we could say, the story is about a, a person who screws up, who gets what they deserve, God punishes them, and then God brings about a, a little bit of a happy ending for some of the other folks. And we kind of think that that's how a story should go. But that's not how the story goes. And the story of Jonah doesn't end there. 
as you may well know. If we get to the end of the first chapter, it says, Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah. A fish swallows Jonah up. Again, it's not the end, though. Because Jonah prays within the belly of the fish, and by the time we get to the end of the next chapter, it says, And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah gets a second chance. The fish spits him out, and God says, let's try this again. Go to Nineveh and proclaim to it the message that I give you. And he does. This time he makes the right choice. He goes to Nineveh, and he proclaims God's message. And the message that God has for Nineveh is that they've been making bad choices. There is violence and there is evil running rampant in Nineveh. And God says there are going to be consequences of that. Nineveh is going to be destroyed. So Jonah delivers that message. But in giving that message, God provides a second chance for Nineveh. Verse 3 of chapter 3. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. God has given Nineveh a second chance. And they turn and they throw themselves on the mercy of God. They repent, they put on sackcloth. And the disaster doesn't come. God has mercy on them. They're given a second chance. God is the God of second chances. And the book of Jonah is a book of second chances. Jonah had a second chance after he was spit up by the fish. And the Ninevites have a second chance after Jonah delivers the message. But as so often happens, Jonah is actually upset that the people of Nineveh repented and weren't destroyed. So often we want to have second chances but secretly, we wish that God wouldn't give second chances to other people. Jonah was like that, and you can read the rest of the story to find out how that turns out. But Jonah is not so much about a big fish as it's about second chances when we failed. I was listening to a, the Jesus Calling podcast, and there was a story about somebody else who had had an epic fail. It was uh, former professional wrestler Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man, and he was sharing the story of his life. He grew up a Christian, he desired to live a godly life, and in his early 20s he had the opportunity to have all his dreams come true. Vince McMahon the wrestling guru, had an idea. He said, you know, Ted, everybody hates a rich person who thinks he's so much better than everybody else because of his money. So I want to create a bad guy character. I want to create a, uh, a character that, uh, that people can hate. And here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll have jets and we'll have uh, limos, and we'll give you wads of cash that you can toss around, and we'll call you the million dollar man. And if you're willing to do this, we'll provide all of that out of our, our advertising money. Nobody will know that you aren't really rich. And so Ted said yes. And it was a bad choice. He had a great family, he had three kids, a loving wife. He had a heart set on God, but 
But now that he would have to live the life of an arrogant rock star professional wrestler. And it was all pretend until it wasn't. Soon Ted became the person that he was pretending to be. The, the mobs of women, the parties, the, the adoring fans, it all went to his head and he was living that rock star life until he called home after an all-nighter and discovered that his wife had found out about the, the life he was living. He said, we need to talk about it. I'll be on the next flight home. And she said, no, you won't. You don't live here anymore. His life was ruined. He was not the person that he'd wanted to be. He was living a lie. But God gave Ted another chance. He came clean to his wife. He talked to a pastor friend, and that pastor friend invited him to a big youth conference. And at that conference, the, the speaker was saying, if you're tired of living a lie, then you need Jesus. And I dare you to come up here. Now, the message is addressed to all those young people, but it struck Ted. And Ted, the great superstar wrestler, went up to the front, and in front of all those kids, he dropped to his knees and he cried like a baby. God gave Ted another chance. He worked out his marriage. He gave up the rock star life, and he started sharing his story with others to encourage them. And life couldn't be better for Ted. God is the God of second chances. As we draw to the close of the Easter season, next Sunday is Pentecost. Today we, we wrap up the season we call Easter in the church. And, and in this time, we often look at the story of Peter and the story of Jesus' meeting with disciples after he returns. And, and there is, is no greater story of an epic failure than the story of Peter. Simon Peter was given the name Peter because Peter means rocky, the rock. And, and Peter kind of looked at himself like Rocky of movie fame, that he could face anything, that he was tough, he would never back down, he would be the rock. And when Jesus says, that he has to go and offer his life, that he has to die. Well, Peter, Peter says, I won't leave you. I'll go with you. I'll die for you if I have to. And of course, we discover Peter, when the time of decision comes, when he can stand up for Jesus, when Jesus is, is being arrested and is carried away, Peter denies even knowing Jesus three times before the rooster can crow. It is an epic fail. But now we reach the, the 21st chapter of John. It is after the resurrection. And Jesus is coming to the disciples there on the shore of the lake. And they've been out fishing and they haven't caught anything. Jesus provides a miraculous catch of fish. And they realize that it is Jesus. They, they come to shore and Jesus says, come have breakfast. And he has fish and bread for them to eat. And Peter is so happy that Jesus is alive and with him, but the elephant in the room still haunts him. His denial three times of even knowing Jesus. We're going to pick up in the, the 15th verse of the 21st chapter of John. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus says, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you to where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. Are those words familiar? Follow me. Those are the words that Jesus said to Peter when he first called him to be a disciple. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me and I'll teach you to fish for people. Jesus is offering Peter a second chance, a do-over. Because Jesus is the God of second chances, the God of do-overs. And Jesus is still offering second chances today. To us who, who, like Peter, know God, but who sometimes fail miserably. Making choices that where we go our way instead of God's way. Choices where we risk our families and even our very own selves. Choices where we may even deny Jesus. But in all of those fails and the consequences that we experience of them, still, still God reaches out, says, follow me. Let's try this again. Let's have another chance. And it may take a fish spitting you out on shore, or it may take a conversation at a fish, fish breakfast, or, or who knows what it might take in your life. But Jesus will find a way to give you another chance. Because that's the kind of God we have. A God of mercy and grace. A God of another chance. Let's pray. God, we pray that we would make right decisions, that we would be successful and not fail in our walk with you and in the way that we treat others. But we confess sometimes, Lord, that we do screw up. There are times when we fail. There are times when we even deny you and run away to do our own thing. Help us to see when you're offering us another chance. And help us to take it. Help us to throw ourselves on your mercy and grace and experience the blessings of another chance. Amen. Gathered, mended, and whole. Empty handed, but not forsaken. I've been set free. I've been set free. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that says.
Thank you for worshiping with us. To see past messages or to donate or to get the GPS Bible study that goes along with this series, visit our website at resumc.org. And now, may God guide you in all your decisions. May they lead you to blessings and joy. But if not, and if you fail, may you discover how great 
is the mercy and grace of God. And may you seize the second chances that God offers. In Jesus' name, amen.